The question of whether we have free will or not is one of the most important and most confusing today. You probably watch videos or articles stating that even if one were not to have any free will, and the universe is fully deterministic, we shouldn't worry about it. Those arguments couldn't be more incorrect. If free will can be proven not to exist in any form or philosophy, which I'm going to take a look at in this video, it would have drastic ethical consequences for society. Part of the confusion regarding the free will versus determinism debate is that many experts, philosophers, physicists, and others don't clearly understand the question semantics, what we even mean by free will versus determinism. Before attempting to answer this question, let's first go over what we mean by free will and determinism. First, there are different types of determinism and philosophy. The type of determinism I'll be focusing on in this video is called causal determinism, also referred to as nomological determinism, which states that events within a given paradigm are bound by causality in such a way that prior states completely determine any state of an object or event. Simply put, the state of the universe right now determines what happens next regardless of our will. Note that causal determinism is not necessarily the same thing as predeterminism. Predeterminism states all events are determined far in advance. Keep this in mind as we go forward as it's a source of much confusion. Free will is the ability to choose between different possible courses of action unimpended, specifically number one in the sense that one can choose otherwise, or at a minimum, that one is able not to choose or act as one does, and number two in the sense that one is the source of one's action. Many people think determinism is in full contrast with free will, but this is not the case as in some theories the two are compatible. Theories of determinism and free will can be either compatibilist or incompatibilist, Incompatibilism is the position that free will and determinism are logically incompatible. If one exists, the other cannot exist. Compatibilism is the position that determinism is compatible with free will. The philosopher Galen Strawson outlined all the possible deterministic versus free will theories using the following table, where T equals the philosophy is true, F equals false, and question mark is unknowable. The correct answer to the free will question, or at least the best answer that describes reality at this time, is one of these possible answers. So, which one is it? Well, to give you the answer, we have to do two things. First, we have to find out if causal determinism is a real thing and is logical, then decide if it's compatible with the definition of free will which I gave above. So, what is causal determinism in philosophy? French scholar Pierre Simon Laplace gave one of the earliest and most straightforward examples of what we mean by determinism, an idea now referred to as Laplace's demon. In 1814, Laplace imagined a vast intellect later renamed to demon by his contemporaries, that knew the positions and velocities of all particles and understood all the forces of nature and computational power. Theoretically, this demon would know exactly what would happen next in any given situation, as it could do the calculations needed to predict where each thing would end up. If you believe our minds are made up of atoms and are just a part of nature like everything else, uh, Laplace's demon will know precisely what you will do or think next, no matter how much you try to trick it or will it away. Of course, nothing like Laplace's demon exists today, and such a thing may not even be possible. But the important thing to understand is that if such a thing could exist, and that all events in the present determine the next subsequent event, then causal determinism is true. Today it's accepted that quantum mechanics is a better description of matter and energy than the Newtonian physics of Laplace's time. In quantum mechanics, the study of energy at small scales there's no velocity, position, and certainty is never absolute. Therefore, some experts argue that causal determinism can't be true, since energy and matter are just distributions of probability, with particles fluctuating randomly in and out of existence. First, I want to point out that what these experts seem to be arguing against is predeterminism, the idea that all events are already predetermined and that one could predict the future, not causal determinism itself. Even if aspects of the universe at a small scale are entirely unknowable, causal determinism can still exist. In fact, one needs not even explore the different interpretations of quantum mechanics or wait around for a grand unification theory of all matter and energy to conclude causal determinism and free will. Just because something is random doesn't mean human choice or behavior influenced it in any way. Our human will and ability to choose things don't affect the randomness of quantum fluctuations. The law of conservation of energy states that no new energy or information can be created out of nothing. So technically, there is nothing new fluctuating into existence. Yes, perhaps a Laplace's demon type entity will never be able to predict the future with complete accuracy due to the quantum indeterminacy. 
But that doesn't mean that we're no longer bound by cause and effect in the rigid laws of nature. For causal determinism to be false, it would appear that one would need to break the laws of nature or come up with an entirely new coherent logical description of how reality works. This new description of reality would go against centuries worth of scientific tests and analysis. Galen Strawson, the philosopher mentioned above at the top of the video, lays out this a priori argument. If one is responsible for what one does in a given situation, then one must be responsible for the way one is in certain mental respects. But it is impossible for one to be responsible for the way one is in any respect. This is because to be responsible in some situation S, one must have been responsible for the way one was in S minus one. To be responsible for the way one was at S minus one, one must have been responsible for the way one was at S minus two, and so on. At some point in the chain, there must have been an act of origination, a new causal chain, but this is impossible. Man cannot create himself or his mental states ex nihilo or out of nothing. It appears that causal determinism is true in our best description of reality and how it works. What does question two mean then? Does causal determinism fully negate free will? Again, there's confusion because some experts think that automatically it does, when it may not. According to the definition of free will I outlined at the start, it certainly seems so. Still, I'll be exploring if there are any compatibilism solutions, again meaning that we can have free will despite the universe being deterministic in another video coming up soon. Uh, so if you like this one, please make sure to give it a thumbs up to help it rank in the algorithm and subscribe for more videos coming up using the link in the description and turn on the notification bell to receive updates when the new videos come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another determinism video coming up soon.